Hello and all welcome to the TNC podcast. Hopes have been dashed, dreams destroyed. But we're back once more. You actually, I'm quite impressed with that. That was just off the top of my head, genuinely. You always, you always do. I'm always like, I wonder how Jack yeah, will, I don't will tee up this show. I don't know. But here we go. And then it happens. We're here. You okay? Yeah, I think so. I feel, I don't know about you, I feel healthier. Ooh, and it's no coincidence healthier. that that's when Norris City aren't playing football yeah, anymore. Yeah, you do look well. Um, thank you. You're wearing sort of a parachute. Yeah. Um, it's well, massive. Ba- baggy's trendy now, it I've is, been told. Absolutely. I yeah. normally go for figure hugging. And the most but... confusing thing about this is it's Paul McVeigh's, who yeah. famously is about yeah. four foot two. Here you go, Macca. Um, He's in. So that is a, a match I, worn. I've no idea why. 2002 shirt. Yeah, I don't know why Punk Vey had a shirt so big. I mean, I can't imagine it was very wind kind of. Maybe proof. it was tactical. Right. Because then people would grab onto it and sort of drag him down. But isn't Maybe. that counterproductive? Possibly. Mm. Um, but yeah, I'm quite I happy like with it. it. I do like that. And it's I just, do you know the thing about this shirt, Jack? This is like the proper yellow in it. Yeah. Like, um, oh, by the way, we're getting into the shirt special again here. Yeah, and for, the, good. and for those of you that haven't watched it, listening or watching this, if you go and uh, go on our YouTube channel and check yeah. out the Norwich City, the big Norwich City shirt debate, um, actually quite a good video. Anyway, um, I love this yellow. I like it's just it. a deeper. I think the modern yellow is a bit more soulless. And considering that's twenty-one years old, it's in remarkably good nick. Thank you I'd completely much. forgotten that we had those guys as a sponsor. The digital phone company. It was one of those that sort of went under the radar yeah. slightly. Lots um, has happened since we last yes, spoke. Yes, uh, yeah. And yeah, we've got quite a lot to cover, haven't we, Jack? So we haven't actually spoken since the season... Finished. Finally finished, thank yeah. God for that. Um, we definitely need to talk about Stuart Webber's media. Just a bit, yeah. There's plenty to talk about there. Um, we've gone and signed Ashley Barnes. Brilliant. As I first posted, just an FYI, yeah. just to put that out there. Um, Fabrizio Reeve Marno. Well, you know, I try. On a serious note, I don't often get stuff, but every now and then I will. Um, what's my point? Yeah, Barnes, Weber, uh, thank God the season's over. Pookie's now not here anymore. And lots of questions to get through. Lots of people I'm, I'm, I'm seeing now looking ahead yes. as opposed to looking back. And thank God, by the way, yeah. I really want to start looking ahead now. And to Absolutely. be fair, we, we all go into Weber's media. That's one of the things I'm happy with. I mm. feel like now we can turn the page. Absolutely. I think we're ready to turn the page. I just want to say, Jack, before we get into into the conversation, yeah. thanks to Maxi Aarons. Yes. Because he's rocked up yeah. to, to the TNC, the TNC studio, TNC studio yeah. and kindly donated um, uh, a couple of items for Brilliant. our charity fundraising for North Wave and Mind and Big C. The shirt has gone to a North Wave and Mind auction. Yeah. So if you're lucky enough to be at that auction, wherever that auction is, you will be able to get your hands on it. Um, but I just wanted to pre-hype the Big C raffle mm. because Maxi Aaron's boots which were worn during the title-winning season behind closed doors. Oh, blimey. Yeah. Do they still smell? Special. They still smell. Yeah. They're dirty. Like right. They've got mud on the sud still. Nice. Um, anyway, they'll be up for all, um, for raffles, sorry. Yeah. But the reason why I'm loving this raffle is Big C have told us that you can enter it with whatever you've got, effectively. Yeah. So this isn't a like a, you have to you know do a, a five or a tenner. It can literally be a quid. Um, so that's a really exciting raffle, really exciting um, charity fundraising opportunity for everyone to hopefully be able to get involved in if you've got any spare dollar. Um, and of course, it raises um, a lot of money for a very worthwhile Absolutely. charity. Absolutely. We will be linking that across all of our social medias when it's live. So make sure you're staying across there. And over the years, we've now raised, I think, about 30 grand for really? different charities. Really? that now? Yeah. I knew it was over 20 Five. Yeah, so yeah, it's pretty 28 good. Twenty-eight yeah. for for Big C, a couple of grand for Mind. Nice, we're getting that. There. Feels good. We're getting so thanks there. for everyone for yeah. their support because that's uh, a huge part of what we do here on TNC. We lost our final game of the season. <laughs> yeah, mate, how sh- <laughs> how shit was that? It summed up the season, didn't oh, it? Oh god, it was diabolical. I'm so like, <sighs> do you know what? I, I I actually I don't want to talk about it for too long because it, it, it like I really do want to move on from it, but. I would just briefly say I was heartbroken um, that it panned out the way it did for Pookie's mm. sake because Pookie deserves better. He was visibly emotional than as well, yet wasn't another he? no show. So whatever you think about the performance, the result, whatever, for me, 
absolutely gutted that Pukki was was um, was sent off that way. Yes, don't get me wrong, the Norwich fans did their job and showed him the love that he deserved. Thank God, by the way, because we were thinking at one point it was just going to be completely toxic, mm. which it, which it wasn't, thankfully. Although it was kind of, it actually made me laugh almost when Pukki went off. It was straight on the yeah. Weber out, da, da, yeah. da, da, which was just it, which just sums up the fragility of the mood uh, towards the back end of the season. Um, but yeah, sad for Pukki. Missed like missed three big yeah, chances. Yeah, I think he had well. eight shots that game. Which you would it, you, you know if if someone has that kind of shot um, numbers, you mm. would expect him to score a couple. But, uh, but uh, it it just summed the season up. He tried so hard, and I think that was almost half the problem. Yeah, and everyone yeah. was just looking for Pukki. So yeah. that was a really disappointing display, and I and I think set the tone mm. of where the club are at in terms of. They have a fan base on pins at the moment and mm. everything is done with really high intensity behind it other than the actual on-the-pitch stuff. And they need to be really careful of how they operate. And I think that plays into Stuart Webber's comments in recent weeks in his kind of local press junket. So... Junket? What does that mean? Press package thing. Wow. Junket. Thank you for educating me. A lovely junket. It's fine. Um, I think that's what it means. Um... For those of you that wondered why we've just cut that there, it's because um, Jack needed to sneeze. You know what it is? I haven't taken my hay fever tablet today. Have you got hay fever? Yeah. I never knew that. Yeah. Oh, right, okay. I think because the, the pyroton I take is so strong, um, it, you know, right. I'm usually okay. Okay, back to what you were saying. Norwich are in a really sensitive position yes. at the moment, I think. Yes, and yes. This summer is going to be fascinating to see the way that transfers pan out and personnel coming and going. And then going into next season, the start's going to be in, like incredibly so intriguing important. to watch how it goes because you've got a manager who people aren't convinced by still. And I think that's fair enough. Yeah. You've got a set of players that have something to prove. Yes, You've got a sporting director who people don't like at the moment. Yep. Um, so lots of moving objects. People do also like him as well as dislike him, to be clear. Yeah. Um, people don't like his recent record in terms of his work. Okay. Personally, nice enough bloke. Um, but you're going into a season where expectations are weird because we went into this season, we expected to win the title yeah. or at least go up. We should have done yeah. based on spend, wage bill, etc. Yeah. We didn't. We're now going to be losing key talent. Teams coming down are, are of quality. Teams coming up are of quality. Yeah, we could finish anywhere between. Genuinely think anywhere between playoffs and being in a relegation battle. And I gen, no, I do think that. No, I do think that. You if you go off form on the last third of the season, Norwich were in you don't, tailed. Yeah, I do. You don't seriously. Think I do. That. No, you don't. I do. We're not going to be in a relegation what? battle next season. Okay, so season. you take the last third of the season yeah, and but, take but, out but, Aaron's and take out Pukki. Jack, it's a new season. I don't Come care. On. Come on. I don't, it's a new season, but you've got the same problems. <sighs> I was trying to be positive. Sorry. <laughs> Are you feeling healthy now? Uh, no, I'm not. I'm back in the, uh, <laughs> in the depressed state that I was in at the end of the Blackpool game. Um, right. Should we talk about Weber's media? Yes. So, first of all, I want to start this section of the podcast by saying um, what we say is not personal. Um, we'll attempt to be as balanced as we can. Um, we want to share our honest opinions too. Uh, but I think whatever we say here, Jack, I think it's important to say, and, and, and some fans have actually said this, right? One of the things, if you rewind slightly, one of the things that we craved in the David McNally era was someone that was open and transparent and honest and just, you know, spoke about stuff. And we're getting that now, right? And so... Well, we've got it once. I'm... Well, look, I, I, I'm personally in the position of you have to take the rough with the smooth. Yeah. And I don't think it would be a Stuart Webber interview without one comment that ruffles the feathers of of various sections of, of the supporter base. And I find that frustrating. I've I've said that on social media. I'm saying it now. I'll say it again. Um, but I'm, I, I'm very pleased that that is done. And I actually felt that um, there were some really uh, there were some really good bits of what he said. I actually I listened from pillar to post to 
uh, BBC Radio Norfolk's uh, one, firstly, uh, before I read the athletic piece as well. And I was very, I was very, very impressed with uh, with Chris Gorham's um, and Phil Daly's questioning. I thought it was a really, really good one. They didn't uh, avoid the the challenging questions. Mm. But my point is, I thought there was some really good stuff. I actually thought there was some educational stuff in there, like stuff that I never knew. Mm. Um, uh, about you know various ways that the board works and things like that. I thought that was interesting. There was some behind the scenes stuff that I never knew happened, but there were some comments where I thought, "Oh, Stuart, mm. what? What? You didn't have to say that. Like it was a ten out of ten answer, and then you've just you've said something that almost you almost lose some of the credibility of the, the good stuff that you've said because you've said something daft. But as I say, it wouldn't be a Stuart Weber interview without you know mm. something that's a bit sparky. I don't Absolutely. know, that's how it's sitting with me at the moment. What do you think? Well, I think, you know, we've had Stuart on this on this very podcast and I like Stuart. I think he's, you know, he's the type of bloke that you can have a really honest conversation with and he mm. will speak his mind and I don't think he minds being asked tough questions. I think he'll front up to that. I think it was nice that, you know, the EDP and the Athletic and the, the Radio Norfolk guys got this opportunity because yep. we've seen a fairly fractured relationship this season. I don't think that's healthy for either side. Yeah. Um, and I think they have the right to be able to ask questions and hold those to account that, yeah. that need to be held account. I thought some of the responses, considering this would have been planned for a while, thought about for a while, he will have known, and I'm not saying the questions were scripted by any measure, but he will know the theme of the question yeah, that yeah, he will yeah. get posed. I just thought some of the responses were incredibly clunky right. for a man of his intelligence his position and I just didn't think it it put him or the club in a in a great light with that being said I think it was a really important piece I think lots of good stuff came out of it yeah and I think more than anything just making sure that your sporting director is visible is really yes. important yes and he's bang on when he says that you know the, the majority of other people in his role wouldn't do this yeah. and, and he's right but Norwich pride themselves on being a community run club Preach. and I think it's yeah. important that they stand by that because off, I think they often use that when it works for them <laughs> by saying yeah. oh we're a commu community self-funded football club when we haven't spent millions of pounds in the transfer budget uh, but when you know things are changing they then don't use that and they go, well, you know, we don't speak to the press because nobody else does. And it's like, well, we're not nobody else. You can't just pick and choose when you want sure. that self-funded community aspect. I still believe that Stuart can take this football club forwards. I think he's astute. Um, but some of his comments really frustrated me. Which were what? I think his comments around women's football were, um, were just really shoddy. And, yeah. and and I come from so let me get the the athletic article up so I'm not misquoting Stuart here because I think that's really important. Yeah. So Michael asked um, Stuart um, about the seven and a half thousand supporters were, were, that were at the football club yeah. at Carrow yeah. for their five three victory. Great achievement, um, brilliant progress made and, there. And how can the club build on that? Yeah, good. Stuart says, I thought it was great because it brought a completely new fan base to the stadium Correct. Um, to see what this business offers. Interesting that he, he mentions the football club as a business. Yeah. I think that's actually important in this aspect. There are plans to maybe have two games here next year, but we have to remember that it's a, like a new club being formed and it costs a lot of money to put on a game here. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. We have to keep the demand because it doesn't work if we have 1,500 people at Carrow Road. That's not good for the pitch to be used. Flo Allen, the general manager has done some incredible work and she's a rising star. Um, now this is where it gets quite fruity. Um, it's like taking a Sunday league team and trying to make them a Premier League team. It's a slow journey. Just because they've got our badge, you can't compare. That game against Ashford Town in the domestic fourth tier, we can say it was exciting, but if we want to talk about quality, it was really poor. Fair enough. We don't want to go too fast when people get turned off just to try and win a popularity contest on Twitter. That was the first women's game I've been to because it's not of an interest to me. I don't mind admitting that. I enjoy working with Flo and helping her, but that's because it's Flo. Women's football, I don't watch. It's of zero interest in terms of on the telly because I watch enough men's football and I'm not watching that. I want to watch other sports. It's a choice, which I think should be okay. Um, I just thought 
there's two aspects here. Yeah, go on. In terms of untapped potential in this country, yeah. women's football is at the height of that. Yeah, and, and, you... and it's hockey sticking right now in terms of its popularity, the conversation around it, um, funding starting to go into place more. It's more popular at schools with with, with young girls. Mm. Like it's a, it's it's something to be proud of as a football. Absolutely, club, it, right? and and if if Norwich City are looking at new revenue streams, which they should be, yeah. they're a self-funding football yeah. club. They're not doing enough for women's football. Now, yes, there were seven and a half thousand people there. Why not? Mm. Could there not be 20,000 there? Arsenal r- now regularly sell out the Emirates yeah, for women's football. Yeah, incredible, incredible. And the reason the quality is poor, and I would agree with that, the quality isn't there yet, is because Norwich City Football Club have disassociated the women's game for decades. Mm. And they've mm. gone, um, you're not training here. Um you know, you can wear the kit, but I think they still had to pay for the kit at that time. Really? They had oh, to, um, you know, play matches away from Carode or the Nest. I know the Nest wasn't there. That's the reason the yeah. quality's poor. They haven't funded it. And the uh, and it's frustrating when you see the likes of, you know, Lauren Hemp came through Norwich and yeah. left yeah. because the, the, the infrastructure simply wasn't, wasn't there. Yeah, 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 so you yeah, have sure. to invest before there's a quality. I thought it was really disrespectful. And if I'm someone working on the women's football team at yeah. Norwich City and seeing my sporting director, my boss, going, well, it's shit quality and I've got no interest. That's sending out signals. Now, he's allowed yeah. to not like women's football. Yeah. Lots of people don't. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. But if you are the leader yes. of a business, as he literally said in that article, yes. that is a comment that's not on. May I, and it I, sets a statement. Yes, no, I, I, I agree. And as I've said, uh, with every single clunky comment that, that's come from Stuart um, uh, in, in the last couple of seasons, certainly, is your words matter. Mm. You know, basic leadership. Be very careful with the way that you word things. And for me, like I'm listening to that response from Michael's question. I'm going, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah, okay. Oh no, yeah. what are you doing? What are you saying that for, man? Mm. It's just, I just, I thought, oh no. It's and and, and, it's the, just, and the, the thing with there's no need to mention the quality. Exactly. Say like say that was. I'll be honest. Question. It's the first time I went to. Here's how I would have answered it. It was the first time I went to the women's game. I was really impressed with the amount of people that came. Mm. I really enjoyed the experience. So did my son. That's great. Oh, and also, because this is the thing, right? I've actually gone to the club and I've said, guys, I need to understand what, what, what's, you know, what, why Stuart said that? What's, you know, I need more on this. And they've said to me um, that actually Stuart has helped get the women's team training at the Lotus Training Centre. They now train there twice a week. Um, they also now have access to the physios and the sports science areas as well, which is positive progress. So again, if I was Stuart, I would have actually disclosed that information. I wouldn't have gone, I'm not interested and the quality is not there. Because you are just, again, you're turning off a massive section of supporters. Mm. So I think we've, we've probably covered that, but I think people know it's abundantly clear we ain't happy with Weber's comments about women's football. Um, you know, whether you watch it, it's like, it's like me. I, I, I honestly think cricket is the most tragic sport on planet Earth, okay? <laughs> but I don't need to be constantly out there, you know, criticising it. Well, all and the also, time. I, just, I just don't engage also, in it. Also, you're, you're not leading England cricket team. Yeah, see, yeah, very valid point. It doesn't matter what you think about cricket. But that wasn't the only. The, big, the other big one, which some people found funny, and I thought, oh, for God's sake, is the divorcees in the snake pit. I forgot the full uh, sentence now, but it was something about divorcees in the snake pit. And I thought, well, it was Stuart, ba- like... He was basically is- saying that his career is not going to be derailed because okay. of the thoughts of divorcees right. in the snake pit. And I'm just thinking about this. Forgive me, Jack, like, for maybe for wording this out loud. My thought process here was, I'm thinking to myself, right, we know near on fact i think this universally agreed amongst the Norwich city fans for once the atmosphere is not good enough and it's not conducive to a successful football team mm. so what <laughs> what do you not want to do when you do press you don't want to criticize the fan base and and you and by the way in terms of the atmosphere historically not anymore it's come from the snake pit 
they're meant to be our most hardened vocal supporters mm. and you've called them all a bunch of divorcees and then i thought to myself jack hmm this is interesting here i almost feel like those big comment i'm actually starting to think now no 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 he can't have he couldn't have just come out with that randomly i actually started to think that maybe it was maybe it was strategical maybe he said those two things as almost uh i don't know like almost some sort of distraction because now the norwich fans are talking about the comments on women's football and the divorces in the snake pit i don't see many norwich fans talking about what he said about why the season's failed i don't see many norwich fans talking about uh, the fact that he commented on the senior players being injured and that, that was a thing. Even the fact that he disclosed about the big offer for Big Andy, Maxi Aarons p- potentially leaving as well. We, that's not the conversation. And so I'm almost thinking maybe it was intentional to say those things. But maybe that maybe I'm wrong. But again, that was just my thought process. And, and, and you know, the, the club are... Do you have advice coming in from a PR perspective? So as you yes. say... That may have been one of the plans. I think the look, there was there was a lot of good stuff in there. I think there was a lot of clarity. The other thing that frustrated me was the the, the almost constant, relentless comparisons to Brentford. Because Michael, I think it was it might have been Chris Gorham actually, was was going, Are you not frustrated that we went up from the championship, I think fifteen points clear yeah. of Brentford and yeah. are now yeah. notably behind <laughs> Yes. Them. And Stuart, of course, said, yes, there's been investment into Brentford, yeah. and that's fine. Yeah. And there has been, and that's true. But what he didn't make relation to was the fact that we spent, you know, circa 60 million quid on players that now don't even feature at the football club. Yeah. Like, there was money that was spent, yes. and it was wasted. Yes, correct. And then it was the comments around, well, no one would be happy watching us play like Brentford because they're a set-piece team. Well, that's like that's disrespectful to Brentford to simplify them down to being a set piece team. Yeah, they're quite exciting to watch. Yeah, and would Norwich fans be disappointed they're, if they had? They're very gung ho, aren't they? But that's what we were like under Daniel Farker, under Paul Lambert. Well, we it, enjoyed that football, and I don't think there would be a frustration for Norwich fans if we were watching a team who were surviving with ease in the Premier League and and doing things in a clever way. But I but I have to say though, Jack, I actually I actually wasn't. I wasn't um, particularly challenged or frustrated by those comments because I actually do think it was an important educational piece to to share because actually I do think people forget the like I'm I'm saying it all the time now. I did an interview for an external uh, for, for for a national this week on the uh, the problems with parachute payments for football clubs and all and all sorts of stuff and like literally we are down to our last. This is why I say all signs point to the Atanasios because we are down to our last peanuts now. And don't get me wrong, that's because the money has been splashed up a wall mm. um, in in many respects. But at the same time, I do understand why he's put that in the room because I think people just forget that. You know the sum, the sums of money here mm. compared to Norwich City's it is ridiculous, and so I'm pleased that he shared that. But anyway, as I said at the start, we can pick holes in in everything. But I sort of had come to the conclusion that yeah, there was some stuff that was was really frustrating to hear, where it was it was clunky. But overall, um, I actually felt that he did well, um, and that he he spoke. Um, with, with, with with confidence and, and he executed the, the media well and I think it now does give us the ability to 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 move forwards and I am of the faith that there is more strategy that actually hasn't been revealed in that in that media I'm not sure why um, so I'm of the faith now that we that we can move forwards and, and that's why and what what I did what was interesting actually Jack I speak about that the senior players piece which we should talk about because obviously now we've signed Ashley Barnes mm. and it was interesting because Stuart obviously cited the fact that we had a, a, a core um, group of senior players that got injured at the end of the season there was no coincidence why we why we tailed off etc we're now going to be in the market for senior players which I'm all up for um, so I found that interesting mm. and obviously we've signed Ashley Barnes and I'm I don't know about you Jack I'm I'm up for a bit of Barnesy actually yeah I think Ashley Barnes is is a player that we need and I think you know, we've, we've spoken before about the sort of Jordan Road signings and even a Hugo I throw into that. Often a lot of the work done by these guys is off the pitch. And I yep. think 
the, the, the just complete fallings apart of Norwich City in those late performances were, were just mm. screaming to me, yeah. inexperience, just don't know how to win games. Yeah. And I think we've seen that success, the success that like Coventry and Luton have had this season. That, those teams aren't packed full of quality and like out and out raw. And I'd say on paper, we've got better teams than yeah. them. Yeah. But what they do have, they're well drilled. Yeah. They've got players that know how to win. They've been here before. They've, they've tasted promotions. And they haven't experienced Premier League football before. They haven't been. They um, want to burnt. taste that. They haven't been mentally there is scarred. That as well, I think Stuart even said that actually, which I'm so pleased he said. Yeah, and I, and I think Ashley Barnes brings something different. I think he'll be a mentor for for Josh and for Adam, who yeah. you know is still raw or still inexperienced, yeah. have undoubted potential. Yeah. Um, and the thing with Barnes is he's risk free. Yeah. Like, we haven't paid anything for him. Yeah. Can't imagine he'll be on a, a huge sum yeah. of money. Um. And will want to prove people wrong because Burnley have just been promoted. Yeah. He thinks he's still good enough to play Premier League football. Yeah. And Burnley have gone, we don't need you. So Ashley Barnes is going, okay, let me prove something to them. And I'll show you next time we get, I get into the Premier League, yeah. if it happens, I am good enough. Yeah. Well, look, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not sure uh, for certain as to why Burnley let him go. For me, um, I'm looking at you know what was said by the, the the chairman there and by the supporters and through the club it looks to me like it was one where it was perhaps mutual that that, that that Ashley Barnes wanted to move on what I'm quite happy with regarding Ashley Barnes is that you know people label him as a shit house and you know potentially a bit of a basic player right but I was quite pleased to hear that there were multiple clubs in mm. for him and mm. um, that was reassuring particularly Middlesbrough um, who have a near-on complete team to mount a promotion charge again next season. They absolutely battered us left, right and centre. And Kieran Scott um, is the man heading up their recruitment. Absolutely, and Kieran Scott is one that we've praised multiple times in this podcast before and is obviously responsible for the for the signings of, of, of some of our best players in recent seasons. So, you know, if Kieran Scott's up for a bit of Ashley Barnes, then I think we should be too. And I have been frustrated, Jack, about... You know the the reaction to the Ashley Barnes um, transfer actually because as you say he is the type of player that we need. I, I think that I think with any signing that we make this summer there is going to be a degree of frustration and I get that because people could only go off recent history and they probably don't trust the recruitment exactly anymore, that right yeah. exactly that so yeah. I think there will be an element of, of frustration. Should we get them some Twitter questions? Yes, because I think there'll be themes. Um, the things we've already spoke about that we can maybe expand on some more. Let's do it. Um, let's start with um, Bish. Bish. Bish says, um, since we got uh, relegated from the Premier League, has Stuart Webber done an interview where he hasn't had a dig at the fans? No. The Wagner unveiling <laughs> had the bedsheets comment. Ooh. This round of interviews had comments on drunks and divorcees. <laughs> Um, and the comments around around Darren Moore as well. Oh, uh, and, yeah, I forgot. Oh, actually, I've, we haven't spoken about that. And I oh. think the comments... Uh, Stuart's got this trait, right? I think we've all got it in us, of acting like he doesn't care about criticism and going, I ignore the noise. I've been into the city centre three times. Dubious. Um, like, don't care what anyone thinks. But... I'm going to get really passive aggressive about those that do make comments. Mm -hmm. And it's like, you, you're either one of the two, like you genuinely don't care. And if you don't care, you then don't go on this kind of rampage about who's insulting you, or you do care and you make that very obvious and you, and you, and you, you're, you're empathetic. Yeah. About yeah, it yeah, and you yeah, go, yeah. Look, it's actually really hurt my feelings. Yeah. It has made an impact on me, which I'm sure it has. He's a man that's been abused by multiple people Rightly and wrongly, I think some things have gone way too far. No, 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 um, no, no. Criticism, fine. Criticism, Abuse, fine. Never fine. Absolutely. Um, so, like, don't put a front on. Stu. We know yeah, this affects you, yeah. as it would do anybody. Well, and I think, and actually, just on that note, Jack, I do actually just want to say another part that I was pleased that Stuart spoke about. Actually, is is you know being abused on the streets and you know yeah, not being comfortable you know going back to your comment there about you know not going to, into city center you know only going there three times etc like 
it must be difficult you know not being able to just freely roam the the, the city that you live and 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 actually he has said in i think it was his club piece he said that he wanted to, to live in norwich forever with his family as well and so that must be quite frustrating which is why i always get frustrated by the fact that he you know he can't um maybe just say the right thing at times towards the norwich fans but abuse to the degree that he's got is never okay and um, we've got a question from jack self jack jack self jack yes and um, he says where do you see max aaron's going love the podcast every week boys thanks jack that's got three likes that one great so quite, name. quite a popular one where well i think we i think we all know he's off i think it's very 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 likely um and i think you know he, he, it's probably the right call, I think, for Max and for the club. The yep. club can recoup some cash. I've been frustrated with players having their contracts run down and then letting them go for nothing. I think that's um, when you're a club like... If you're Man City, you can get away with that. Like You can just let Gundogan's contract run down and yeah. let him go for free. Norwich can't do that. We need to recoup cash. I think for Max, it's time. He's better than the Championship, although I don't think this season was his best, but he was in a struggling squad. Yes, agreed. I think he'll go somewhere, I don't know, like... West Ham or Fulham or, or something yeah, like that. Uh, yeah. Or maybe even abroad. I don't know. But I think he's good enough to play in the Premier League in a good team. Yeah. Um, I agree. I and agree. I think that it's the right time. And I almost feel like a bit of a... Weirdly, I almost feel like a bit of a proud dad. Because I think he, 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 he... I think he'll leave with our blessing. And yes. I, do you know that... And I'm by our, I mean the Norwich City fans. And that's, you know, for Max, that's a huge compliment that... Wherever he goes, the Norwich fans will absolutely be behind him. Um, and, you know, it is a massive success story for, for Norwich City. I do want to make it clear, as I have on, on quite a few occasions regarding Max, is uh, be careful who takes the credit for Max Aarons at, at, at Norwich City. Um, because um, Well, everyone will take credit for Of Max. course, but yeah, let just be very careful with who you hear you know, is, is responsible because, you know, there, there was a period where, I mean, Russ, Russ Martin, um, uh, by the way, very topical, he has told me on many occasions how he had to vouch for Max in, in, in various circumstances and, you know, w- was actually saying, no, no, this guy is going places. Yeah. Um, and others weren't sure. And now those others are taking credit for him. So it, just be careful. It's with always that. amusing. I think I've probably spoken to 15 people that have claimed credit for being the coach that broke Todd Cantwell through. Oh, I'm really? like, well, it's not all of you. <laughs> so one of you are you're lying. Um, um, yeah. Statement. Just a quick one from Kieran that says, Statement, we're pissing the league. Kieran um, is clearly been taking advantage of our Lakens discount um, when he's posted that. Um, I, I don't think we're pissing the league. Next well, it's season, certainly too we? early to say it now. I mean, you we're know, not pissing. The come league August season. time, I'll be stunned. Who, well, yeah, we aren't. I don't think I will be stunned. But it, we, it will be interesting to see where the squad is at. I think, and you know, there's a couple of months. Well, I think that actually the first pre-season yeah. game is in like a month. Um, but the squad is going to look entirely different, and I think it needs yeah. to look different. Just quickly coming back onto Max. Oh yeah, go on. And and I think it's important not only for the development of him but others. We, we've got to remember here we've got, we've got a player returning in Bally Mumba who will be craving game time and I think Max going yes. freeze that up forgot about Bally so Bally boy. that excites me excited to see Bally actually yeah. I think and I almost felt a bit bad for Bally because he, he, he was thrown on a couple of times in, in the in the dismal Premier League season wasn't he yeah um, against like literally like Man City I believe yeah. was one of yeah. them um, where he doesn't let's be honest, stand a chance at that stage of his development. I'm so excited to see mm. Bally Mumba next season. I'm really confident about, about him, actually. Um, this is, here's, yeah, a, here's a question from Nathan. Go on. Uh, um, Nathan says, why does everyone seem to think that we can say whatever we want to Weber, and as soon as he calls fans a group of divorcees, in brackets, which is actually quite funny, we get so offended? Surely we all need to lighten up and relax. I personally love Weber's passion, determination and fight. Yeah. Look, lots of people do. And I think um, I had a funny message the other week cool. saying like, you boys think you're the voice of the fans. You don't speak for me. Well, look, you, you we can never speak, claim to be, by the way. You can speak for yourselves. We're just doing a podcast of our opinions. Yeah. There are plenty of people that, that love Weber's honesty. And often yeah. I do. Yeah. And I think it is quite refreshing that you've got a man leading an organisation who could quite easily just stay quiet is opening up and in our modern day is risking 
being, you know, quote unquote, mm. cancelled, which you know is always a an interesting phrase. But um, he's on. He's certainly honest, and I think that is something that we loved when it was going well. Yeah. And now we don't like. Now it's not going well, and and you know that's hypocrisy on our part to anything. Um, Let me level it out with a statement, very strong statement from the Cornish Canary, Steve Chapman on Twitter. He says, this man, I think he's referencing Mr. Webber here, this man is honestly destroying my love for this club. I can deal with shit football. I've endured plenty in 37 years, but this is toxic. Sorry, but his toxic, arrogant attitude has polluted the club from top to bottom. He sets the tone. He calls the disconnect. He now openly criticises he must go. And see, this is the problem that we've got, Jack, is that, you know, those little digs, they all, like, don't get me wrong, in isolation, it's like you could almost just brush under the carpet of, oh, bit of a slip of the tongue. But it's almost been, there's been so many that it's like, I can understand why people have got to the point where they're like, I can't be arsed with it anymore. Yeah, and, and Steve Chapman replied to that comment that I just read, and he said, it's really simple. Uh, we're not employed by the football club and we're not the figurehead, the single most important representative of the club. And I think that's important. Stuart, you know, constantly talks about Norwich being a business and I think that's quite important for his role because at the end of the day, I know he's controlling on-pitch activity, but that's hugely influential to to the top line at Norwich. You just need to be clever with your words. And as you say, words matter and it sets a tone and it, and it, I just think a lot of the comments, one, are unneeded, mm. are unnecessary, and I think comes from a place of, of, of insecurity. One of the, yeah, linked to that, Jack, one of the phrases that I picked up a lot in the media was um, he used the terminology human shield yes. multiple times to all the different outlets, actually, I think, funnily enough, or at least two of them. And I thought, well, that's interesting. And that's very evident that that is what he is being, because... You say there about, you know, he's the single... I don't know I don't know if you said this or those words-ish. You said something like, he's... I struggled to listen to you for too long. Um, he's, the mo- he's the most, you know, senior, you know, important person at the football club, blah, blah, blah. Hang on a minute. Where are the board, right? And by the board, I'm talking about Zoe. Let's hear from Zoe. And again, I said this in the last podcast, and I will say it again. I want people to know we have requested to have Zoe Weber sitting here on this podcast to actually talk openly about you know the uh the the relationship the goings on the stuff that happens and i think people you know think that you know stuart is the only top dog because he is the only one that puts his head above the parapet but for me i want other people at our football club to start taking a step forward now especially if we want to move forward and especially with all of the we'll call it reputational baggage that stuart brings i think it's time that, that we hear from from someone else to, to help us move forward in a positive manner. Chris Reynolds says, guys, talking of transfers slash loans, do you feel now is the time for Adam Eder to get a much needed loan move away from the club? I believe he needs to build his confidence at a lower league club, a Cambridge or Fleetwood, and bag a few goals and be the main man. Chris, I think, blooming heck, I, I think Cambridge and Fleetwood is, 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 uh, is very disrespectful to to Adam. I I do also feel that he could benefit from a loan. I actually feel that he could benefit from a loan more for the reason of the crowd have made their mind up at the moment. And I actually think that almost him going out on loan, getting in a new positive environment for a season would be a benefit. However, I think the club have left it too late. I think that actually Adam should have had a loan move a lot earlier. Um, Perhaps they tried and it didn't happen. I don't really know why on that, to be honest with you. Um, but this all goes, you know, maybe this is linked to Ashley Barnes. I'm interested to hear your thoughts on this chat. Maybe they'll think that Adam will work well with Ashley or maybe they'll, they'll think that Josh will work well with Ashley. I'm not quite sure, but interested to know your thoughts. Yeah, I think, Adam he, I think he does need a loan. I, I don't think it will happen. But because, are we going to sign another striker, Jack? Well, this is the thing. I think I think Norwich, I think any championship club needs to go into a season with at least four attackers. And at the moment, we've got three of note. Barnes, Sergeant, Eder. So if you let Eder go, you're now looking for another two. I can't see us signing another mm. two attackers. I think we need to. And I think you look at past promotions of like Rhodes, Pookie, um, I can't think of any like, but you'll always go into a season with four. Um, I don't think 
Ida is good enough at the moment to be in a team going for the top six. I don't think he's... And that's the aim. Well, I think, I think regardless of whether you think he's good enough or not, I think his, I think his confidence has been absolutely battered, you know? And, and I would actually make this very clear, actually. I'll be quite punchy on this. I thought the, the treatment and the singling out of singling out of Adam Eder at the Blackpool game was disgraceful. I well, thought I, I, it was well, really poor for the Norwich City fans to literally boo Adam after he missed a shot. And don't get me wrong, it was a shocking shot. But to boo him like that... Phew. I don't think it was helped either by Dean Smith's comments surrounding Adam. Well, I know. Like, yeah, a, again, a, again, like your a words physically matter. limited player or something. Again, your words matter. And what about this from CJ Leffler? And, we, and we've not actually spoke about this topic on the podcast so much for once, Jack. Um, he says, I'm keen to hear your thoughts and knowledge on the Atanasios. Why did they buy into Norwich in their first place? What do you understand to be the vision of the club? And what role do you think they will realistically play in the next couple of seasons? Oh, well, I think Stuart's made it very clear that you know they're not going to be coming in and going, Here, here's 20 million quid for transfers. Yeah. The way I see it, and you might know more or, or think differently. I think they've them and their you know their representatives that help them with their investment arm have gone. This is an undervalued asset. They own their stadium. They own their training ground. They've got assets and they're they're playing at a, a relatively high level. Mm -hmm. We think they are cheap and we'd like to buy in, and we think there's potential to take them further forward. I think it will be a slow burner. I think over the course of a few years, they will want and they will, I think they've made it very clear that they want majority ownership so they yeah. can make decisions. I think they will start to bring in some of their people to sit at board level and make decisions and help with the decision making. And I think that one of their first jobs should be coming in to, to, the, to the board level and not an operations level and going, what are we doing wrong here? And mm. what can you learn? I think when we did the podcast with the Athenasios, the the big thing that stuck out to me and something they kept going on about was the data that they use at um, at the Milwaukee Brewers yes. and how they think that can help from a yes. recruitment standpoint. And that's what Stuart's mentioned in his media round, didn't yeah. he? He suggested that there was already support from those guys yeah. in that department. And I think we'll we'll start to see that. I, th I think what we won't see is a Todd Bowley approach of here's Instant, X amount of yeah, money, yeah, yeah. go and do what you want yeah. with it. So look, it has gone quiet. You know, you've you've kind of um, had talks with people, and it's at a legal level at the moment. Um, but it's clear as day. I think we can. You know, you don't need to be a genius to go. These people want mm. to come in and, and have control yeah. of decision making. And yeah. I think whenever that point comes you probably will start to see some change um, at a kind of director level. I, th I think it, I agree with you, Jack, actually on many levels there. I, I think that it's going to be uh, a lot more, f I'll call it phased, yeah. um, than what a lot of people are. I know a lot of Norwich fans are obviously hoping on a full-scale takeover and an injection of money. And, I, and as I've said before in a previous podcast, I believe that we need... 50 million quid spent this summer in order to mount a promotion charge that's my genuine belief i believe we need 50 million and um, people will cite to me coventry luton fair point absolutely fair point you can get your recruitment right but as i've already said i don't trust our recruitment anymore and to, well, the, to and that, the degree that i used to well and that will be the concern for the athanasios is if they if they go here's 50 million quid will it be spent on the right will player it be spent hence correctly. why they might be investing in the data infrastructure side of things yeah. first to make sure that their decisions are um, Educated. mathematic, if that makes sense, scientific, as opposed to finger in the air, I reckon this player might be quite good. And that's exactly um, what Brighton and Brentford have done. They are using data. analytics and data yes. that has been successful for Tony Bloom and Matthew Benham's um, gambling expedition. And what I would say is it's not brand new at Norwich City. That's what they did with Gabriel Sarah. I know that for a fact. Um, and there's been some other players. But it's clearly well. not working because it's also indicated Milo Rashica, Christos Jolis. So there's more misses than there are hits. I don't know for a fact whether those players were signed on data driven decisions. Well, you would have thought as a recruitment team there will be similar. I, okay. instruments All I can say place. is I don't know the facts on that. With the Athanasios, like going back to this, CJ, just once more, is um, 
why did they buy into Norwich in the first place? Well, it's absolutely a business decision, um, without a shadow of a doubt, for all the reasons that you've articulately put, uh, articulately put across there, Jack. But having spoken to them, I really have, I do really have a lot of faith in them as people, and I do believe that they are the right type of people to invest into the football club. And the fact that they've got through the dealer and Michael filter is <laughs> is probably telling and, that and they're I, good people. And I think they, re- and I do, do, do genuinely think they care about the fans and the community. Yeah. I think that's a big part yeah. of what they do at Milwaukee. Yeah. And it really kind of, when we were lucky enough to speak to them, like they were here on a business trip for like two days. They had yeah. the entourage with them and they took two hours out of their day yeah. with us jokers. Yeah. <laughs> Not really to, to, I think they were using us as a sounding board of like, what are the fans feeling? Yeah. Where are we at? How can we progress yeah. the experience? Yeah. All of this boring stuff behind the scenes will be going on. Yeah. But I do think emotionally they are very connected as well. Yeah, I do. F- I feel that. I, I, I certainly feel that. I was, I think I've shared this snippet before. If not, I will now. Just because I think people are starting to wet their pants that they're not interested anymore. Um, when I first spoke to Mike Atanasio off the back of the watch alongs and the first contact and he was, um, we, we did a video call where he was in his Los Angeles mansion and I was in my, my, my Norwich house. Um, and I was very impressed because he kept saying the same thing. How can we help, Chris? Mm. How can we help? How can we help? Help, 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 help. Um, and you're going, he was, help. And he was, <laughs> and I was like, please. <laughs> um, but also he was writing notes. And I know this sounds like a really small thing, but I was like, that, I like that. It, sh- it shows that he's wanting to listen to, to be like, right, what do, how can I really help this football club? Um, don't lose faith over the Atanasios just because things are taking their time. Uh, it is illegal at the moment. I do think it will happen. I think it will just be a lot more phased than what people well, are I often thinking. think with these things, like think about the process of buying a house, right? Like, I don't know, a few hundred thousand pound purchase. How long the legal stuff takes with that they are buying a multi-million pound <laughs> yeah, true. football club. That's very true. There is, it is going to take a long time. What about this from uh, Norfolk Paul on Twitter? Let's go and see if he's got a buyer. Mm. He just says simply, city till I die. Paul um, loves Norfolk and Norwich, good bloke. And he says, I'm strangely optimistic for next season, especially as the squad is getting a much needed refresh, we think. Uh, uh, that's me interjecting there. The negativity around the club needs to change. We're Norwich City, so let's get behind the team, shit on the blue scum twice and smash promotion OTBC. Yeah, I love that from you, Paul. Yeah. Uh, I really do. Um, I uh, want to know what you're eating for breakfast be right optimistic. now. Because, be optimistic. Yeah, of course you should. support football. You should choose yeah. to be optimistic yeah. and positive because if not, you will drag life like a cold bag, of, through life like a cold bag of shit. But um, yeah, I, I yeah. I, what I would say about good, Paul, st- good words, Paul. What I would say to Paul, be optimistic, and I think you've got you know every reason to to be optimistic. I was speaking to a Leeds fan yesterday, and I was speaking to a Southampton fan the day before, both deeply, deeply concerned about the future of their football clubs and the tra- trajectory. And I would say, out of the twenty four Championship clubs, twenty of the fan bases are concerned about what's going on. It's natural to get worked up and frustrated because it's we're, we're so emotionally invested. When you, when you take everything out of it and you step back, you go, we're Norwich City, like in, in the nicest possible sense here, and I'm being respectful here. We are Norwich City in terms of infrastructure and finance we have and all of that. We have overachieved for so many years. And I think Stuart was yeah, right about yeah, expectation. Yeah, yeah, when yeah, you break yeah. it all down, we are probably about the 33rd biggest club in England. Okay. And that's where we finished this season. Dom Spencer uh, at Southern Canary on Twitter says, we're repeating ourselves here, Weber's got, I think a lot of people want to say a lot about Stuart Weber. Weber's got a terrible case of Smeagol and Gollum, oh, Smeagol and Gollum about him. (laughs) Jesus. Uh, While some of his interview answers make a lot of sense, there's definitely an egotistical gremlin that can't resist making snide, defensive and unhelpful remarks too. We've covered this at length. I I think with, you know, you look at, the majority of highly successful, which you would put Stuart Webber in that bracket of, not many people are leading football clubs, highly successful CEOs, football players, yeah. there is an ego. And I think you have to be a bit of a dick sometimes because of the mm. position there. Well, in. you can have an ego, 
right? And I think this is something that, you know, has been frowned upon from a player perspective. You know, elite players have egos, right? It's okay to have an ego. We've all actually, we've all got a bit of an ego, yeah. to be honest. But they need to be managed. But, uh-huh, and I think, and yeah. I think this, this comes into the bigger picture. Who's holding Stuart to account? Well, what I would instantly jump on with yeah. that, Jack, is I thought it was brilliant that he answered. I think it was Phil or Chris, I forgot which one of them it was on BBC Radio Norfolk, spoke about that, about the fact that, you know, your your, your wife, as they worded it, was is on the board. And so what happens? And I found it very interesting and um, relieving to hear that it's written into their contracts that if something is... Um, if something is going to be shared about one or the other and one is in the room, then the other one has to leave the room. And I think, look, I, I wasn't think that, even, was, that was important to know. I wasn't even putting Zoe into that conversation. Right. Stuart needs to be held to account. Yes. And whoever's doing that hasn't done a good enough job in recent years. And I don't care if it's Zoe or Delia or whoever it is. Yeah. He has underachieved in the last couple of years. Yeah. And I think, I think it was Chris or someone said to him, like, p- people in your position with this kind of feed history would have been sacked by now. Well, it was interesting, actually, because he actually did sort of self-confess that, didn't he? He went, if, if you're marking me on this season, then yeah, I should be sacked. Yeah. I think it was roughly those words. Forgive me if I'm wrong. So it's interesting. Um, Jamie Everson, I love this from you. He says, shout out, congratulations to the women's team who gave us more entertainment at Cow Row than the men. Jamie, you bang on. Well, exactly. And I think, like, it, was a, it was a bold statement to say... And I think, to be fair to Stuart, he did say it was entertaining, but he wouldn't watch it again. Mm. I mean, if we're basing the men's team on entertainment, it was the most boring season of all time. We didn't score for five home games. (laughs) You were trying to forget about that, weren't you? Yeah, I was. (laughs) Uh, James Edwards. Any possibility we're looking for a new head coach? Wagner was only one year rolling, I think, and our end of season woes. If it was any other club, I'd expecting I'd, I'd be expecting a possible change. This is interesting, isn't it, from from James Edwards, Jack? What, what's your thoughts on uh, David Wagner? I, I I think before you go here, I think it's on a knife edge, right? Because I think that Norwich City fans are just about willing. Maybe I'm wrong here. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. I do think the majority of Norwich fans are willing to give Wagner a window. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Willing to give Wagner a window to get us to Wembley. Say it again. Wembley way. Um, but if you don't hit the ground running, we need a fast start next season. Okay. Well, I, It's so important to have a good start. And I know people say, oh, we didn't have a good start on Daniel Farkas 2018. I know that. But like because of the fact that things are on a knife edge, because of our form at the end of the season, because of the squad changes, because of all of the talk that we've been given again... Wagner absolutely is. It, it, this is this is you know it's a bit of a gamble to be fair, isn't it? Do you think? Well, I think uh, putting my opinion aside, he will be the manager at the start of next season. Yes. Um, you're right in saying most of the clubs would have sacked him after the record. Was it one win in eleven, one win in twelve, something like that? Yeah. I think what going back to Weber again, he's getting his airtime this um, this this podcast. The fans probably have more of an influence on the choices than we think. Because what what really stood out to me was Stuart was asked about Dean Smith and said, do you regret not getting rid of Dean Smith pre-World Cup yeah. break? And he said, no regrets. We still had full belief in Dean going into the World Cup. So what changed from mm. the two games after the World Cup? Mm-hmm. Well, I think what was going on was they were going, shit, this crowd have really turned. Because on the pitch, nothing changed. We were losing yeah. matches before and we were losing matches after. Yes. So nothing can change that quickly. So I think the influence the fans have is, is actually quite big. I think I saw enough, and I'm kind of, you know, latching on the straws so slightly. I think I saw enough from Wagner to go, if he's given a transfer window yeah. with his players, he can get this with team. With players to actually implement the style of play that he actually wants exactly. to. Exactly. When he came in and he spoke about the way he wanted to play, and obviously we've all seen that, that Tifo football, which is brilliant, by the way, the Tifo football piece on how David Wagner wants to play, etc. Like, I'm willing to, I'm definitely willing to give it a spin. Um, yeah. And, and actually, <laughs> again, I don't know if this has um, been put out there or not. No, it has actually. Weber said it, and someone else told me this as well. Got who? Sorry, 
David Wagner's pre-season apparently is absolutely horrific. But I mean horrific in a good yeah, way. Yeah. And Stuart mentioned about the fact that this team needs to get fit again. Because it's very evident under Dean Smith that training was not a priority. Um, so under David Wagner, they're going to get absolutely obliterated in pre- pre-season. Looks and, like a new and, coach and, is coming in and under, well. Yes, potentially. We don't know we that for certain yet. But, um, what's my point? Uh we need to be the fittest team in the league. That was one of the reasons why we scored so many late goals under Daniel Farker. We were the fittest team in the league, whereas now we concede, game over. Mm. We ain't coming back from it. We haven't got the energy to come back from it. So I'm excited about that. And I think one last thing that doesn't kind of relates to it. I think it's funny how perception changes people's opinion on people. So I've seen particularly in the last couple of weeks, people saying that Wagner is just a shit Daniel Farker, right? Yep. If you look at the careers, very similar. Yep. Wagner at Huddersfield, promoted, kept them in the... Like, came through a similar education at Dortmund. Yes, yes. Wagner at Huddersfield, promoted, yeah. kept them in the Premier yeah. League. Well, that's already one better than yeah. Farker because he failed to keep us in the Premier League. Correct. Sacked, goes to Germany. Yeah. Sacked. We're about to see that with Farker at Much and Gladbach. Wagner's now came back, come back to England. So I think it's unfair to say, I think Wagner's career... And his achievements of being very, very good. Yeah. The same with yeah, Farker. Yeah. You don't win two championship people, titles. People, people also like to cite the people also like to cite the circumstances around Daniel Farker, but yet they won't consider the circumstances around David Wagner. So I do agree with that, Jack. That, that, that that's quite lazy. I want to share something positive. Go on. Completely then. unrelated to a question. It's about Gabriel Sara. Oh yeah. Okay. There is. Uh, I think I think I'm pretty sure Stuart bought it up. You're not going to sing, um, are you? No, I'm not. Uh, although I can if you want. No, please to. don't. Um, not really in the mood to be honest with you. Gabriel Sara, I want to make this very clear. I have been told that Gabriel Sara wants to stay at Norwich City Football Club. You can take this however you want, but I want Norwich City fans to know that Gabriel Sara is not looking for a transfer away from Norwich City this summer. Wow. He loves this football club. He's even more happy here. Now, he's imported his two dogs from Brazil in November, December of last year. What breed are they? Um, I don't know that, but I, was that t- I will Come find on. out. I will find out. Um, I think you can see it on his Instagram, to be fair. Um, anyway, I think that's really positive. And I also want Norwich fans to know that, you know, you know, of course, if a Newcastle comes knocking with th- you know, 30 million smackers and uh, you know, ridiculously high wages, perhaps the conversation changes. Um, but I do want Norwich fans to know that you know our player of the season is not actively looking for a move out of the football club, and I think that that's encouraging that you've you have got some some quality there. Absolutely, um, yeah, that, that, that you can keep. He's not wanting out of this football club. And I think if you're like that's really pleasing to hear. And I think if you're Wagner, you're looking at Sarah going, I want to build a team around. You, you. should be absolutely yeah, because we've seen those magic moments, and if he's got the right player, if he's got the right players around him, I think that could be. A real, real positive um, and right to be, direction. And on that kind of ilk, we hadn't really spoken about it, but Weber made it clear that they turned down what would have been, oh, yeah. he said, a bigger sum of money than we sold Godfrey for. So you're looking at like high 20s, maybe 30 million quid. For Big Andy, this is. For Big Andy. Yes. So like there is a willingness to try and keep quality mm. at the football club. So who knows? And I think the, the, the best thing about that is what you've said there. He wants to stay. Yes. Not he's being made to stay. Yes. He yes. wants to stay. Yes. And that's a big difference. Yes. Absolutely, and I just wanted to make that clear uh, because I think it's very easy to put something in the room uh, and then, you know, come next season when Gabriel Sara stays at this football club because he wants to stay at this football club, I think, you know, people need to realise that he definitely wants to stay. So Barnes is scoring 30, Sarah's running the show, <laughs> Big Andy's staying. And, uh, and, and, but I don't think Big Andy's staying. And Wagner's the man. On a very serious note, I don't think Big Andy's staying. Right. I think Big Andy's Well, let's staying. hope we get more money than Godfrey then if we've I already think, turned a bit down. I, I don't think we will. Uh, but I, but I, I highly, highly doubt that uh, Andrew Omobama Daddy will be a Norwich City player come the start of next season. Really optimistic for a moment. We have covered a lot. Most of it was wow. about was about. What's the Stuart conclusion Weber. then? Because you know we've I think got a summer ahead of here's us. Here's the conclusion, Jack. Let's try our very best to look forwards now. Okay, we can pick a million and one holes. Like we've got, you know, Stuart Weber is our sporting director. He is going to share some things that don't sit well with 
um, with, with certain supporters, you know, whether you're a, a 20 year, 21 year old gamer, a divorcee in the snake pit, uh, someone that supports women's football, uh, one of the old people that sits in the city stand, you know, you can go on forever. You know, one of the hacks like he, us. He is going to offend you at some stage, but ultimately, it is what it is. We've got what we've got, and we need to try and be positive. We need to try and be positive. We have to close the chapter on this season and look, and look forward. Don't get me wrong. If it's going Pete Tong at the start of next season, we've got a very, very different conversation on our hands. But look, you know, we can start to get positive with some positive signings. We've made a great one in Ashley Barnes. Apparently, but, one coming this week. Apparently, I've absolutely no idea who it could mm. be. Genuinely, by the way. I was, at, I was scratching my noggin thinking, I don't know. I was like, I'm trying to join the dots. I was like, no, I literally have no idea. I actually have no, literally no idea who it could be this week. Mm. Um, so that's a positive too. Good. Um, don't forget, good. before we finish, <laughs> yeah, good. Don't forget, Big C raffle. Yeah. Um, it's gonna be, it, when, do we know it's, when it's going on? It's going to be dropped towards the end of this week, okay. not confirmed yet. Um, but Big C are going to set up a just giving uh, link. And uh, I don't know the exact terms yet, so I'm not going to, say them but effectively you can donate what you feel comfortable to donate and you will be offered the you will then get a ticket for the raffle and then you can then win um a pair of max aaron's uh match worn boots from the title winning and they still season. smell they actually do give them a good sniff i shouldn't say that max watches the pod good um thanks for this Thanks, mate. Uh, yeah, let's get po- let's try and be positive. Um, and we'll be back. Yes, I don't know when next. Hopefully, to speak about a few new signings. There'll be plenty yeah. of videos over this summer. Yeah. Transfer rumors, my thoughts on things. Yeah, maybe Chris's things on things. He's probably jetting off somewhere, so I won't be doing anything much this summer. Um, I've worked hard enough, mate. I've been. Have. I've done eight weeks of uh, special guest pods back to back. I'm um, having a break. But there's. I suspect it's going to be a very busy summer, yes. and we'll be across absolutely everything. Yes, and next season will be good come on statement yeah can you guarantee it nope (laughs) (laughs) good to see you